-hmm. All right. So let me show you what we're talking about here. So again, we started with the idea of solving this generic quadratic equation in standard form using completing the square. Okay, and square roots. Okay. What I would, what I almost want to have you guys do here is really like, if you have trouble with both writing and understanding at the same time, you know, obviously you always are making a decision then. Should I be writing stuff down and not understanding it, or should I be listening but then not writing it down for later? I would encourage you just to follow along if you're one of those if you're one of those people that can't write and understand at the same time I would prefer you just understand it than write all this down I'll post this video on YouTube and stuff like that you can watch it if you really want to I can make copies of this if you want me to just make a copy that's fine too okay but I prefer you just to follow along so that way you can kind of like digest it while we're doing this okay so um, completing the square right first thing we want to deal with anytime we're completing the square is that lead coefficient of a we don't know what it is a could be one but we just don't know so we're going to divide everything by a right so divide everything by a we end up with x squared plus b over a x plus c over a equals zero okay and then what is the typical next thing that we do when we go um, again and the process of completing the square what will be the next thing that we do here Subtract minus the c over a from both sides, right? Because we want to have no constant. So, and that is our constant right now. So we'll have x squared plus b over a x. We'll leave a blank, right? Equals negative c over a. Okay. And now we are set up and ready to go to actually complete the square here. So we will set up two sets of parentheses and pretend like it actually factors, right? So we'll have an x here and an x here. And now here comes a little bit of the tricky part, right? We need two numbers here. These two numbers have to add to make what? The coefficient here, b over a, b over a, okay? Which is like a little bit weird to think about because, you know, in the past we've had numbers and that's easy to come up with in the top of our head, right? But here it's a little bit harder. We can use Dylan's little trick though that he mentioned earlier during the warm up. Instead of, you know, thinking of these two numbers, Dylan said to take this middle term and what did you say to do, Dylan? Divide by two. Divide by two, right? So what is half of b over a. Half of b over a is equivalent to you just doing one half times b over a. In other words, b over 2a. b over 2a. Okay? So that is what we're going to add in here. Because if you add one b over 2a and another b over 2a, you'll have 2b over 2a, which implies to just b over a. And then that means then for our completing the square, what is missing right here? I have to add what to both sides here? Well, I have the x squared, right? I have this x plus this x will make the b over a. It's these two things I have to multiply together. So in other words, it's going to be b squared over 2a times 2a, which is 2a squared. I'm going to go ahead and make that... 4a squared, if you guys are okay with that, I think that might be helpful here. So I'll make that 2a times 2a, 4a squared. So in other words, we'll add over here b squared over 4a squared, like that. Okay, so the left-hand side, that's a perfect square now, right? This right-hand side, that is messy, okay? Can we combine these two fractions together the way they're currently written? No, we can't. However, what can I do to this fraction to make it possible for me to put these two fractions together? What do I need to combine these two fractions? I need a what? Or, or square root. Uh, don't just square root. So let's look at this fraction's denominator, and let's look at this fraction's denominator, right? In order to combine fractions, we need a common denominator. What does this denominator miss that this denominator has? Okay, it has, it's missing a 4, so let me put this over here. So we have negative c over a. 
So I need a 4 in the denominator. So I'll multiply by 4 over 4. What else is this denominator missing that this denominator has? It's got a squared over here, right? I already have an a, so how can I make it a squared? If I have an a already, what should I multiply by to make it a squared? A, yeah, another a. So I'm going to multiply by 4a over 4a. Okay. So let's see here. I'll write this. Oh, too many pens. It's a festival of pens. So this negative c over a will actually become negative 4ac over 4a squared. And then I already have b squared over 4a squared. Right? So far so good? Questions up to this point? So again, I was just going to common denominator here. I can put this all in one numerator. So I'll go ahead and put this in the normal order. b squared minus 4ac over the 4a squared there. right? So it's negative 4ac plus b squared. I just flipped the order around me to b squared minus 4ac. No questions up to this point? We're all okay. All right, so what should I do now? Again, we're trying to solve for x, right? What should I do next? What's with the x I need to get rid of? <laughs> yeah, and go right, square root. Yeah, exactly. Square root both sides. So now we'll have x plus b over 2a equals, now, the square root, remember that when you square root a fraction, it's equal to the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. Okay. Can I take the square root of these individual pieces here in the numerator? No, we have subtraction, right? We can't break up a square root over subtraction. Okay? So the numerator is going to have to stay the way it is. But can I square root 4 and can I square root a squared? Yeah, right? What's the square root of 4? 2. What's the square root of a squared? A. Okay. So, and since I square root in an equation setting, I should really put a plus or minus here the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, okay? And then what do I do to finish solving for x here? Minus what from both sides? The b over 2a. And oh my gosh. What do we have here? The quadratic formula! Wow! Amazing. Okay, there's our quadratic formula. So easy. So easy. Look at that. So easy. Okay. So, now that we have the Cleveland square, we can factor and use quadratic to find the quadratic formula. That's the derivation of the quadratic formula right there. Okay, you derived it. Okay. Some people got to this point. Okay. Good for you to do, right? They just maybe need a little manipulation there, but that is the quadratic formula. Okay, that is the quadratic formula. All right. Um, you know, it's a good formula to know, right? It allows us to solve any quadratic equation that we ever come across. Okay. So that was what I was having you guys find. Is figure out how to do the quadratic formula. <coughs> All right, so shall I show you an example with one or two maybe? And then we'll be good to go. Okay. Let's do one or two here, okay? Just to make sure we're all good with that. Okay. Um, uh, you have to memorize the equation. That's a good question. I haven't decided on that yet. I feel like I should have you guys memorize it. I feel like you should have to do that on the test.
Oh. Say what? This? Yes. Um. No. <laughs> no. No, I won't make you do that, I guess. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, truly, though, truly, you will need to know the quadratic formula by heart if you plan on continuing your math career. So, if you're planning on going to pre-cal calculus, you will need to know the quadratic formula by heart. Okay? There's lots of ways to memorize this. All right? If you want to go to YouTube, there's like probably 50 million videos of people trying to be internet famous or be cute or clever with um, a, their own song for the quadratic formula or their own rap for the quadratic formula. Okay, um, one that I know, you can sing it to Pop Goes the Weasel. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. You can do it that way, okay? Either way, whatever you do, but I would encourage you to memorize it, even if I decide that you don't have to memorize it. But anyway, so let's use this one right here. So the first thing you have to um, make sure of before you use the quadratic formula is you must be in standard form. Okay, first, first, first. So that means we'll have to move everything to one side. It doesn't really matter what side you move it to, but you will want to move it to one side. Okay. Now, in real life, not real life, I guess, in, in for future math classes, all right, you're not going to be like prompted in the directions to like solve. You'll be given a quadratic and just be asked solve this, and you will have to then select which tool in your arsenal you will use to to solve this particular equation. Okay, so let's just kind of go through our tools here, right? Would factoring be helpful here? Could we factor and then use zero product property here? Are there two numbers that multiply to be four but add to be negative six? No. So factoring doesn't work here. Okay. Could we complete the square and then use square roots? Yes. Yes. You could. You complete the square and use square roots here. It's going to be shut, right? Yes. So um, yes, you can complete the square and use square roots. Okay. So th that completing the square and using square roots will also always work. So it's pretty complicated here. The quadratic formula will also always work. Always work. So it can be like, you know, the fallback kind of thing that you use whenever, you know, if you ever get stuck or you're not sure or something like that. But of course, there's a trade off. It is universally applicable to every quadratic we come across, but it's also the yuckiest looking one, right? And it's like pretty yucky. So anyway, um, let's identify here. Okay, so our A is this number out front here, which is just a 1. The B is the negative 6. The C is the 4. Okay, and we just plug it into our formula. So X equals negative negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A. Okay. <coughs> and then we simplify Negative, negative 6 becomes 6. Okay, negative 6 squared is 36. And then negative 4 times a 1 times a 4 is going to be negative 16. All over 2. Okay. Notice I have not simplified the divide by 2 yet. I have not simplified the divide by 2 yet. But Mr. Witt, 6 divided by 2. You're right, it does. But we're not going to do that yet. Okay, I would encourage you, I would discourage you from simplifying right away like that, too. We have more work to do. 36 take away 16. 20. Okay, and then that square root of 20. I'm going to simplify this over here on the side rather than like continuing to rewrite all my quadratic formula junk here. So square root of 20, we can simplify that square root, right? What perfect square divides 20? 
4 and root 5, right? So then 2 root 5 is what we get there. So in other words, this becomes 6 plus or minus 2 root 5, <coughs> bless you, all over 2 like that. Mr. Way, are we going to get I's in these quadratic formulas? Yes. Yes, you will. Okay. All right, now we'll simplify. 6 over 2 plus or minus 2 root 5 over 2. The reason why I ask you to hold off on simplifying here is that some students would only divide 6 by 2, and they would forget that the square root is also being divided by 2 here. Okay? So um, when you break up a fraction, the numerator breaks up over the addition subtraction there, but they both are divided by 2. 6 over 2, 2 root 5 over 2. And so we get 3 plus or minus root 5. There are two solutions in simplest radical form. Okay. You get the same result if you decomplete the square and square roots. Okay. One more thing I want to show you here. Before I get you guys started on the assignment, okay, is okay, a part of this quadratic formula. Okay. You guys remember this part underneath the square root here? There's a name for it. it starts with a D. Discriminant. That's right. But Mr. Witt, I thought it was bad to discriminate. Well, it depends on how you're choosing to discriminate. Okay? It's still on freeze. Aw, oh, man. There you go. Sorry about that. Okay? That is the discriminant. Okay? The B squared minus 4AC. All right. a little chart here with three rows, one for a value, one for the number slash type of solutions, and then one for like a, you know, rough sketch of okay. So there's three situations that can be true for our discriminant, three different um, interpretations we can make. If our discriminant is greater than zero, okay, which is what we had in the previous problem, we're going to end up with, well, how many solutions do we have in the previous problem? Our discriminant was a positive 20. How many solutions did we end up with? It's a plus or minus, so there's two solutions. Two solutions, and there are two real <laughs> solutions, right? Yes, there's a square root. Two real solutions. Why? Because we are adding and subtracting the square root of that discriminant. Right? So the discriminant is positive, it's bigger than zero, your square root will be positive, right? And you're going to add and subtract that number. So it creates two real solutions. Compare that with if our b squared minus 4ac, if our discriminant is equal to zero. Well, now if I have a zero here, what's the square root of zero going to be? What is the square root of zero? Or what times what gives you zero? Zero times zero, right? So square root of zero is zero. So if I add or subtract zero here, if I take negative b and add zero, if I take negative b and subtract zero, I'm going to have the same value. So in other words, we'll only have one real solution. Okay, because of the quadratic formula stuff there. And then finally, if I have b squared minus 4ac and we are less than zero, If this was negative, 
and we square root a negative, what kind of numbers do we end up with now? Imaginary. Yeah. And there's going to be two, because we're going to add the imaginary number and we'll subtract the imaginary number. So two imaginary solutions. Our better word might be non-real, but anyway. Okay, so what's, what's, what's the graph look like? If your discriminant is greater than zero, your parabola is going to come down and intersect the axis at two points. There are your two intercepts, right? If you have a discriminant that's equal to zero, that's where the parabola would come down, just barely touch, and then go right back up, right? You have just one zero right there. And then for imaginary, you have a parabola that never intersects. The x-axis, and so there'd be no real solutions. There's just the two imaginary. Okay. And so then you can use the discriminant to identify, you know. So here's just an example I'll give you here. So I don't know, um, or just. Let's identify how many solutions exist for mm, five equals seven x squared minus two x. Okay. So the discriminant is easier to calculate, but it's less powerful too. Bless you. The discriminant is easier to calculate, but it's less powerful. It tells you how many solutions and what types of solutions. It does not tell you, you know, um, what the solutions are. So, you have a question? Um, does the two imaginary solutions have any characteristics in graphing? In graphing, you won't be able to see them, no, right? Because we only graph in the real plane, right? The x's are real, the y's are real. Um, but, you know, we'll still be able to find the solutions using quadratic formula, for example, or clean the square and the square rooting and stuff like that. So. Okay. Just like for the quadratic formula, must be in standard form. Okay. So I'll just subtract the 5 over and make that really easy. Okay. You go first oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Is that good enough? You want the whole table like yeah, that? that Okay, so what's our A here? Seven. Seven. What's our B? Negative two. Negative two. What's our C? Negative five. Negative five, right? Okay, so B squared is negative two squared minus four times A times C. Okay. So we get four. Ooh, okay, let's see here. Negative 5 times negative 4 is positive 20, so plus 140. Okay. So our discriminant is 144. So, two real solutions. Exactly right. Two real solutions. Okay. Our discriminant is positive, so we're going to have two real solutions. In fact, it's going to be two rational solutions. So yeah, two real solutions will be our answer. Okay. So the discriminant is just like a shortcut for certain situations where you only want to know how many solutions and what type of solutions that you get. You could totally just use the quadratic formula for this get the solutions and then say, oh yeah, based on my solutions here, there are two of them and they're both real, so we're going to have two real solutions that you can actually find the solutions to. Okay? But that's just overkill. You only had to, in this case, find a number of solutions. All right. So again, I just one example of each thing, but it's using the formula and simplifying. Okay? So I want to get you guys started on your assignment. All right. In the green book, on, on 4.8, and I already have this posted to Schoology this time, so I don't have to like run to the computer and upload it real quick. All right, in section 4.8, I'd like you to do numbers 7, 19, 36, 39, 
52 to 54, 56, and then 70 is one of those fun ones there. Okay. What page is it? Oh, I'm sorry, page uh, 296. Okay, so let's get cracking here. Please make sure you read the directions before you do the problems, right? I assign problems from different sections. For example, 36 and 39, you're only supposed to find a discriminant. So please don't, you know, torture yourself with more quadratic formulas than you need to. And then 42 and 46, you get to pick whatever method you want to solve 42 and 46. You have agency. Wait, did you say 70? 70, you don't have to, I mean, if you want to try, I'd say give it a try, but don't like, um, you know, break your brain over it if you're like frustrated or don't start crying or anything like that, okay? I mean, if you start crying, I guess it's okay, but I mean, you don't need to cry about it, okay? It's just... Okay, Kareen, I'll be right there one second. Yeah, go ahead. 